And finally, just enough batteries. It's gonna be a good old time. Well, that died quickly. I'm kinda bored. I haven't reviewed a game in a while. Something... something bothering me. Something... something that's a pain in my butt. Sonic 06. What are you doing there? You're not that bad. Just misunderstood. Okay, yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. What, what do you mean you brought a friend? You didn't bring a friend. I told you if you're gonna come over to my house, you don't you don't bring none of your none of your weird friends, Sanic. It's fine, you can just you can just leave. Who's your friend? Don't tell me. Tell me, let me guess. The E.T.? The Superman 64? You can only guess. You can only guess. No. You didn't, Sanic. Sanic? You didn't. You didn't just bring me Star Trek Shadow Universes. You didn't just do that. You, didn't, you, you are forbidden from this house from now on. Star Trek Shadowed Universe. Yeah. No, you you haven't heard of this game, you probably haven't. I mean, you clicked on this video, you probably heard of this game. Ah yes, twas the year 2005. Everyone was really excited about the Xbox 360, however, I was more excited to get my new Xbox original, seeing as how I miss out on so many third-party games that didn't come to GameCube. And one of the first games I got for my Xbox was Star Trek Shattered Universe. At first I thought the game was pretty good, but then it quickly got worse and worse, till the point where it was unbearable and I stopped playing the game and rage quit. Alright, let's give it a try and see if it's as bad as I remember. It probably is. Okay then, the logo seemed to be having a seizure. Well, um, this looks very promising. Well, it looks like the menu is glitching up a bit. I'm sure it'll fix itself once we start the actual game. You are ordered to make the Enterprise break off this attack now. No, no, it's it's the best game ever, really. It's uh it's very green. So it turns out if you skip any of the logos at the beginning, the game just sort of glitches out for no reason. Yeah, that's uh some great programming there. Who made this game again? TDK? That sounds, uh, familiar. Alright, let's see what else they've made. Shrek, He-Man, Aquaman Battle for Atlantis. Wait, what? Nope, nope, I'm abandoning ship right here, right now. Well, the situation's getting a little out of hand, so I think I'm gonna let my clone handle the rest of the review. Well, I'm dead. Alright, let's talk about the story for a minute. So Captain Sulu is just sort of minding his own business, doing some kind of mission or whatever, and then the Excelsior gets teleported into an alternate dimension, and uh, everyone sort of wants to kill him, so the Excelsior has to find its way to another portal to go back to their original universe. The story's not too terribly complicated, but at least it's something. Okay, so now that we've actually started the game, here comes my first complaint. Everyone's faces look horrifying. Seriously, they make me want to vomit a grommet. And I don't even know what that is. And another problem. The animations are awful. It's like they literally had a budget of $5 to do all the animations. Okay, we spent all our budget on Aquaman. What kind of animation can we get for $5? So for $5, I can make their mouths move. Not in sync, of course. And uh, I guess I can make their eyes blink sometimes. And what if I threw in some pogs? Well, in that case, I can make their heads turn occasionally. Okay, let's talk about the gameplay for a minute, since that is the most important aspect of a game. You play as some unknown character piloting a fighter. You fly around and shoot things. That's it. Seriously, that's pretty much all you're going to be doing the entire game. Not only that, there's very little variety in what you're shooting at. Sometimes you'll be shooting at other fighters, and sometimes you'll be shooting at bigger ships like the Enterprise. How about we take a look at the first mission so you guys can see what I'm talking about. 
As soon as the mission starts, Sulu orders me to make the Enterprise break off its attack, so that basically means to shoot it. So I shoot it, for about two minutes straight, and it flies away. So then Sulu tells me to take care of the rest of the fighters, which takes about another two minutes, and that's the end of the mission. Exhilarating, isn't it? Let's give this game the benefit of the doubt for just a minute. This is only the first mission after all, it doesn't have to be super exciting. Let's try out the second mission. So mission 2 starts and it's a fetch quest. Once again, how exhilarating. After you collect a few things, a bunch of Klingons appear, and you have to shoot them down. After you shoot them down, you have to collect a few more things, and then more Klingons appear. Rinse and repeat. You know, I wouldn't have so much of a problem with this game if the combat was actually fun, but it's just sort of repetitive. Like, the entire game, all of the combat, is repetitive all the time. And if that wasn't bad enough, there are several fetch quest missions. You would think this would be the only one because it's so early in the game, just to teach you the controls or something. But no, in a few more missions, there's another fetch quest just like this. Okay, chapter 3, let's see if this one's any better. So the Excelsior goes to Starbase 9 to get some repairs, and while it's getting repaired, the Starbase gets information that we're traitors to the Empire, so they send out some fighters, and guess what you have to do? Shoot down more fighters, and it takes at least 5 minutes, which is way too long. After about 5 minutes, the Excelsior gets repaired and you have to shoot the clamps off the dock. Just gotta be sure not to hit the ship, and... Wait, what? Okay, hold on a second. Sulu told me to shoot off the clamps. When I shot the clamps, the entire Excelsior exploded. Why? You might be thinking I did something wrong, but I actually didn't. I replayed the mission and did the exact same thing and got a mission success. This game is just random. Let me give you an example of how random this game can really be. In fact, I have an example in the next mission. This mission has you fighting the M5 computer from the original series. Captain Sulu says that the computer is in the ISS hood. Well, after blowing it up, I find out that he's wrong. So I go ahead and target another ship, and as soon as I destroy it, it instantly says mission failed. Okay, I think you get the point. This game isn't very good. But let me show you one last mission. This last mission is so bad, it made me rage quit the game for over five years. So guess what? It's another fetch quest. You go to point one, you fight some enemies. You go to point two, you fight some enemies. You do this over and over and over again, and it feels like it never stops. I'm not joking when I say the first time I played through this segment, it took me over 45 minutes. That's an absurd amount of time for one segment of this one mission. If the tediousness didn't make you stop playing by this point, this next section of the mission will definitely make you rage quit. After the first segment of shooting down fighters for 45 minutes, two much bigger ships come out of absolutely nowhere. And then at the same time, more fighters appear, and then everyone starts shooting at the Excelsior all at once while it has no shields and no weapons. No matter what you do, the Excelsior gets completely destroyed in less than two minutes. If you decide to take down the bigger ships first, the two dozen fighters will easily take out the Excelsior. And if you decide to take down the fighters, the two bigger ships have more than enough firepower to just destroy the Excelsior no problem. Let's just stop for a second and do the math here. You have the Excelsior and one fighter. Then on the other side, you have two really big ships, much more powerful than the Excelsior, and then two dozen fighters, all targeting the Excelsior all at once. Now if you give me a second to work out the math here, um, it's absolute nonsense. Because the Excelsior has no shields and no weapons, it gets taken down extremely easily. Let me remind you that if the Excelsior gets destroyed, you have to play through that entire 45 minute section all over again just to have a second try. Oh I know, I'll just lower the difficulty setting. Oh wait, I've been playing on easy this entire time. Let me put this into perspective for just a moment. This game on easy mode is more difficult than Sin and Punishment on hard mode. A game so difficult, it's meant to punish you with its difficulty, and it's even in its name. How bad this game really is can be summed up into one sentence. Every level is an escort mission. This game has maybe two good things about it. They got George Decay to voice Sulu, and there's a few good soundtracks, and that's it. The gameplay and game design itself has no redeeming qualities. 
and I can't even really talk about the graphics because there's hardly anything to look at in the first place. This game, it's just... It's just so bad. I, I can't take it anymore. It's so bad. <laughs> well, that was Star Trek Shattered Universe. Now, it might be my least favorite game of all time, but I do realize that there are some people who like it. In fact, when I was looking for footage online, I actually found a few people who were like, oh, this game is so good. I'll never understand those people. And the people who are fans of Sonic Boom, I'll never understand that either. But, um, yeah, I mean, what really makes the worst game of all time? Opinions. Opinions. That's probably it. Well, I don't really have much more to say. The review is, uh, it's kind of over. And, uh, the more I film this, the longer it will take to render and upload to YouTube, so, um... See you guys later! Thank you everybody for watching. This video took a long time to make, but I'm glad I finally made it. Um, if you like the video, make sure to click the like button because it's only logical. Get it? Because... because Star Trek? Okay, yeah, now... Now I'm really gonna go. Bye.